I'm Nick Grove for Morningstar and today I'm joined by Head of Equities Research Peter Warns who's here to discuss the ongoing reporting season. Peter, thanks for your time today. Lovely to be back, Nick. First off, Peter, CBA reported a flat dividend and a profit that was slightly above Morningstar's expectations. But do you think Ian Narev and his team have the nous to handle the market volatility that we've seen lately? Well, Nick, you know, that's a $64 question. So far, I mean, they've demonstrated they can, um, but mind you, the volatility really in the marketplace has been, you know, post December 31, albeit we had a lot of volatility prior to that. But, you know, that volatility seems to be, you know, driven much, much more offshore than, you know, in, on Australian shores. And, you know, we're not seeing any of that, that, those problems that are, you know, really driving bank stocks down internationally because our guys really, whilst they've got some exposure to resources, it, it's the it's the fear that you know of third party or counterparty risk in derivatives in that energy space that's really got the market scared, and I would argue that that's being you know comparing that to the GFC is nonsense, um, and so you know getting back to to, to Australia, uh, look all all the metrics that you know CBA reported were very very strong again. Um, yes, the economy is under trend, and we know that. But when you look at, you know, a cash profit up 4% to a record 4.8 billion, you've got a steady dividend of 198 on earnings per share just up a touch at 284, the payout ratio 71%. And, you know, as I said, all the metrics very strong. It's hard to say that, you know, um, we've been, we've been in a, in a, in a, you know, a bad market. Uh, but of course, you're investing in the future, not the past. And uh, but we don't see any any gremlins in the system uh, domestically uh, that can upset the apple cart to any great degree. You know, Narev and his and, and his management team have done a terrific job. Um, we believe that the, the dividend for the final uh, it will be up a touch, uh, four twenty five up from four twenty for the full year. And the yield on that, you know, is very, very, you know, a nice five point something and, um, and grossed up to over 8% for, you know, super funds in pension mode. So, look, you know, we're still pretty comfortable with the banks uh, and, and Commonwealth Bank in particular. Peter, Cochlear looked to have a pretty strong half lifting its dividend, its profit and also raising earnings guidance. Do you foresee any kind of conceivable threat to its narrow moat or to its exemplary stewardship rating? Nick, um, again, a very, very good question. Look, the risks are internally. Um, could you have another or a series of device malfunctions? Uh, do management take their eye off the ball and go and do something silly? Um, it's, it's in, their, it's in you know, their court, if you like. But externally, uh, look, their innovation and uh, and the products they're, they're they're introducing to the market um, are up there with the best. They haven't got uh, you know to where they are in terms of a global market share by being an ordinary competitor. They are at the front edge and leading edge of innovation in the space, um, and and you know right across their organisation now in terms of where they are selling their product. Um, in the Americas were strong, uh, another good performance out of China, uh, and, uh, and even you know, in um, EM&A, um, European, European markets, it was good. Now, what I liked about the whole result, yes, it was up 30-odd you know, percent at the top line, the dividend was up 20-odd 20, 20 percent, um, was that they've said, OK, now China, um, we, our business plan there or our business strategy is a 50 to 100 year strategy. I just wish some of our fund managers had a, you know, not maybe that long a outlook, but, but certainly more than 50 days. Um, and, and they realised and they said, look, look at the number of people in China. And the more uh, the middle class becomes, you know, more affluent and what have you, they'll be able to afford these things. I mean, deafness is 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 a problem globally, and um, and it is relatively expensive. But the more affluent the middle class of China get, the more they'll be able to to you know uh, purchase these these um, devices. 
and it's really is very, very, uh, you know, it, it's it's going to be very, very strong growth. Now the market's picked on that and sent costlier through 100, joining the other two, if you like, healthcare stocks in CSL and Blackmore's in the $100 club. Uh, and I suspect that, you know, they've got a tailwind now. Um, clearly, that was a terrific result, but, you know, we're not extrapolating from that level. Uh, it will come back a tad in the second half and uh, and going forward, but it's a very strong result for a good company and obviously benefiting uh, from uh, the lower A dollar. Finally, Peter. Last night, Rio Tinto scrapped its progressive dividend policy for 2016, posted a loss of over a billion Australian dollars. Should prudent investors be anywhere near commodity producers like Rio Tinto at this point in time? Nick, probably not. Uh, look, the, the scrapping of the progressive dividend is, it was, everyone knew that was going to happen. Uh, you've got to, you know, cut your cloth to, 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 to you know, to fit the fit what's happening, and and they've decided to do that despite the fact that the dividend they paid is for for fifteen for for, 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 for two thousand and fifteen is steady on two thousand and fourteen, uh, but the uh, that's at two dollars fifteen US a share. Um, they've indicated that they'll pay a minimum of a dollar ten US a share in. 2016 so they're going to that's going to be halved um, the result wasn't all it didn't you know it wasn't all that bad it was down 50 percent you know but the, the cash operating cash flow free cash flow was strong because they've cut operating and 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 capex um, uh, and the majority of the fall uh, in earnings was driven by price not by volume uh, particularly in iron ore look going forward we think that there's too much expectation that you know iron ore prices are going to stay up and 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 demand's going to stay up and we we certainly don't agree with consensus consensus suggests that you know, uh, earnings in 2016 are going to be around about $1.50 US and then rebound into 2018 at $4. We're nowhere near those numbers. Um, and, uh, and our fair value is not, well below, uh, the current market price. And so, no, we don't, we don't believe that, uh, that this, uh, Rio management understand uh, just what's really going on out there and we're, because we've got a, a, a fairly negative view on, on what's happening in China in terms of demand for commodities and infrastructure uh, and so on. So we, we think you can, you can comfortably stay away from Rio at, uh, at, at this time. Peter, thanks very much for your time today. Pleasure, Nick. I'm Nick Grove from Morningstar. Thanks for watching.